Alright guys, so we're back with a brand new video. So we're going to talk about post requests. So post requests can represent any action that requires creation of a new resource. So let's say for example, if you go on google.com and you type in something like Gmail, okay, and you click on the Gmail application and you want to create a new account. Well, you have to enter in your credentials, you have to enter in your first and last name, the email address that you want and a whole bunch of information. When you click on the submit button, it's going to make an HTTP post request and all of that data is going to be part of the request body. Now, all the data is sent to the Google servers. The Google servers is going to do their validation. The Google servers are going to do their validation. They're going to make sure that there's no confliction between your email address and someone else's. Someone else might already have that email address. So if that does happen, they're going to have to send back an error message. And so if everything goes well, then they're going to send back a 201 response, a tool one status code and it's going to say hey look this person successfully created an account you're good to proceed typically whenever a post request is made it is implied that the web server that receives the post request saves the data to a database normally so request bodies i mentioned them in the previous slide but they're basically just additional information that's contained in the request object and it can be contents of an html form raw text it will be a whole bunch of different things and it's important to note that not every request method contains a body. So for example, get requests do not contain a request body because you're just retrieving information from a server. Now, if you needed to provide additional parameters for a get request, you can use a query parameter or a query string. All right, so now that we know what a post request is, let's go ahead and implement one. So we're gonna go ahead and reference the app object and we're going to call the post method. So this is going to allow our web server to handle the post request. And the post request, you can also specify an endpoint to send the post request to we're going to use the same url for this slash and there's not going to be any confliction at all because we have different methods for the same endpoint so there's going to be no confliction and what i want to do is i'm going to show you guys what the request body looks like okay, remember what i said earlier the request body contains additional data that you pass along with the request so like a username a password email address etc and what we're going to do is we are going to just send a 201 status for now and we'll just send a message created user. So let's just go into Postman and let me just make sure my server is running right now. So local host port 3000. So if we make this get request, you can see that's going to send back the result from over here. But if I were to change this to post, now if I click on send, it says create a user and it says a status of 201. Obviously, we didn't really do anything, but let's go ahead and send some data. So I'm going to show you how to send data with Postman. So we're gonna click on body right over here and you can select either URL encoded or raw. So whenever you are dealing with HTML forms and you're sending the data from your HTML form to your backend, you wanna make sure on the server side, you're enabling the URL encoded middleware. So to do that, you wanna simply just type app.use and then express. So you're referencing the express module over here. So you need to make sure you have this imported into your project and then you want to type URL encoded, okay? And then you're going to set the extended property to false. So now that we have this middleware enabled, this is going to allow us to handle URL encoded data, the URL encoded request bodies. So watch this, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this for now. And we're just going to pass in key value pairs. So let's say for example, for our form, we might have an input with the name of name and that can be whatever name that we want age will be 22 and then email will just say john at gmail.com so this is just key value pairs okay so i'm going to send this over and notice how right over here it says undefined right that's because we are not registering our middleware but now if i send it again after saving the file after registering that middleware you can see that we now have the request body right over here it has name age and email Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So we just sent some data along the way. Now, if you want to send a raw payload, so you can either send JSON or text. So let's just send some JSON. So let's just say name, John, age 22. Now, if I were to send this, you're gonna notice that it's also going to just be empty. And the reason why is because we actually need to apply the JSON middleware. Okay, so express.json will do that for us. So basically what these middleware functions will do is before every request, before it reaches this callback function, 
it's going to basically detect form data. It's going to detect JSON payloads, and it's going to parse them correctly and then attach it to rec.body. So I know we didn't really go over middleware, but don't worry so much about it. We are going to talk about it in the next couple of videos. Okay, but for now, all you need to know is that you need to make sure you have these functions registered in order for your data to be present. Okay, hopefully that little brief explanation made sense. But now you can see that before it was empty, but now it's not empty anymore. Okay, that's because we opted into the JSON, express.json middleware. So that's pretty cool. So typically, whenever you make a post request, you would want to save this data to a database. So obviously, we don't have a database set up yet, but we're just going to add it to this user's uh, array. Now, you want to make sure that you're always validating your data. So, for example, I don't want to just, you know, do this, something like this, cont user equals rec.body and then users dot push user. You don't want to do this because obviously you're not validating your data whatsoever. So anyone can just send anything. So let me just go ahead and send some data. And now let's go ahead and retrieve it from users. Now you can see that I have three records that all follow the same structure, but I have this one record that doesn't. Okay, so what you would want to do is you would want to validate the data that is being sent to your server because you never want to trust client data because anyone can send you anything. So obviously I have this email over here which shouldn't belong there. So you wanna make sure that you are always checking which properties that you're using. We're not gonna do this in this video, but in a future video, we are going to talk about validation. All right, now aside from request bodies, we can also send HTTP headers and the headers basically allow us to attach additional information to our HTTP requests or responses. Now you're probably wondering, well, can't we just send them in the request body? Now, typically headers are usually for, for the global side of your application. So think of it like this, if every single one of your route needs to handle the same type of data, there's a chance that you should possibly pass that in as a header rather than in the request body. Okay, and you should typically pass in data in the request body that belongs to business logic. So let's just handle a simple post request with a header. So we're going to go down over here and let's just say this. Let's just pretend that we are going to make a post request to the post route. So we want to create a new post, either a status post or a blog post, whatever. Now, I want to make sure that in order for users to make this post, they need to have some kind of token. So whenever it comes to authorization tokens, so again, you're, we're going to learn about that later when we get into authentication and authorization. Usually you need to pass it in as a header because every single one of the route is likely going to need the authorization token. So what we're going to do is we're just going to console log rec.headers so I can show you guys what that route is going to look like. So let's go over here and let's make a post request to posts. And if you look right over here, you're going to see that the headers pretty much is just an object. And let's go ahead and send an additional header. So let's pretend like we are going to make a post request and let's just say we're sending an authorization token. And this is just a fake example, okay? But let's just say one, two, three is our token. Now, if I send that, you're gonna see that we should have a header called authorization and we have the value of it is one, two, three. So let's go ahead and just simply get the authorization token from request.headers. And this is called object destructuring. So I'm pulling out the authorization property from rec.headers because rec.headers is an object. And I'm going to make sure that authorization is truthy. And if it is, I'm going to make sure authorization is equal to one, two, three. Okay, so we're just hard coding it, but like I said, it's an example. You wouldn't actually do this in a real application. I mean, if you did, it would be probably pretty bad. Then we're going to go ahead and reference the request body. So let's do const post equals rec.body and we'll console log post and let's go ahead and reference post and let's push post to the array and let's just send a 201 status along with a message. Let's just send back the data that they sent us just to indicate that they've, we've created. So if this is false, we'll just send back a status of 403, which means forbidden, which means that they did not pass in the correct credentials. So let's just say send forbidden okay so let's go back to over here and let's give the title key and let's just say i love video games so let's send this and you can see that we have a 201 created and if i were to go to the get method you can see that we have our post over there okay and the reason why that worked is because we had our headers now watch if i change the token or fake token and let's just send this over you're going to see that uh let's see Oh, that was a get. Whoops. You got to change it back to post. 
Okay, CLS is forbidden. We don't have access to this route because we passed in an invalid header. Okay, and likewise, if I were to pass this back again, and let's change this to I love pizza. Okay, and we can change this to I love coding. So we can go over here and we can see that if we were to get this, we have all of our posts. And if I were to get rid of the token, you can see this is forbidden. And that's just pretty much how headers work. Obviously there are a whole bunch of different properties. We can't go over all of them, but this is just a simple one. So hopefully this video made sense and I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.